but nothing says Christmas like frozen penises and baby sniffing cocaine. Well, that's how I celebrate. I don't know about you. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. This, that's what I love about this movie is the realism and the, and the believability behind it. You know? yeah, with this economy today, I mean, yeah, you can't go out and buy Christmas trees and do it all up like you used to. You got to you got to get down to the dirty cheap of it all, which is getting a baby what fucked up and uh, yeah, pretty much. Can you put your dick up against the cold well, pole. <laughs> you, you can either spend a lot of money on a great Christmas. Or you could just get high and pretend you had a great time. That's, that's what I think it is here. Is we've got two guys that are so stoned that they just think all this shit happened to them. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Merry Christmas! It's the power of love and Santa. Ah, I'm hungry. No. <laughs> Apparently you haven't celebrated uh, Christmas at the Leon and Corey house. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the kids. We'll get them nice and fucked up. <laughs> yeah, our eggnog is, is cough syrup. <laughs> the Robit- you guys serve Robitussin? <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yeah, Robitussin. <laughs> Just in three. Yeah, <laughs> good stuff. But DM. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing shuts up a noisy kid like getting him high and fucked up. That's my method. <laughs> you know, I wonder hey, how, how he gets most of his dates. I, the, the best thing about this movie to me was just thinking about the people who are going to have a fucking hissy fit from the little toddler in here who just gets fed like every drug that they that they pretty much make. I know. I, I if if Hunter S. Thompson was alive, Hunter S. Thompson would look at this kid and go, holy fuck. That, no, <laughs> I, that, that is something that really bothers me. And yet, I was like, you know what? I'm actually laughing too hard to get mad. Well, because it's all so absurd. It's yeah. all so just obviously a fantasy that there's no way to actually get mad at it. Yeah. Like, yeah. saddle down, Francis. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. like, that's what the movie wants to do, man. The movie wants that, that movie wants that person who's like, I can't believe you did this. You know, they're oh, like, absolutely. yes, yes, thank you. That's the biggest compliment we can get for this movie. It's provoking people like that, even in the way like there's like racist jokes all the way throughout, but it's yeah. kind of like the way we do it. That yeah. It's like, we might take a racist joke against one race, but then five minutes later, would pick on somebody else entirely exactly and they were like oh you didn't get upset yeah. at that first race <laughs> yeah they don't give you're you, they, the yeah. racist they don't give you time to get upset because by the time you're like man that's fu- oh look there's another one <laughs> yeah no, i know you, in fact you know all the everything in the movie is 3d except for that guy poking that person with a stick who's gonna get upset at this <laughs> right. movie like huh you upset yet huh you bothered yet <laughs> like, and boy let me tell you i actually enjoyed the hell out of the 3d uh, that they use in this movie because it was like a kid discovering 3d for the very first <laughs> oh, fucking totally. time i mean hey, you, you got what? liquid you got all kinds of crazy shit it's what you want to do with you. 3d it's yeah. like don't 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 half-ass it if you're gonna go for it and be silly then use it as much as you can well, these oh, movies yeah. have never made any mistake about the fact that they want you know they want you to get high before you go see them and this movie presumes that you did <laughs> and just yeah. does we got three to you check this shit out <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or it assumes that you're gonna be so upset when you leave this you're gonna say man i need to get high <laughs> i'm so angry i gotta get fucked up to come down man yeah i got my little description right here yeah i was film. waiting for you oh yeah, yeah no, let's, I, I let's all take you. a step back and let cory do yeah. uh, let work uh, its magic uh, yeah, let, like, like, like linus spotlight please yes. yeah let, let black of claws read you a little, little story right here <laughs> <laughs> a little baby Jesus was born, and Harold and Kumar made fun of that motherfucker. <laughs> and drop kicked that bitch. <laughs> and Harold and Kumar got him fucked up. <laughs> no, what? So in this film, I mean, there's been three Harold and Kumar movies. This is the third one. In the first two, Harold and Kumar, you know, they're friends. You know, I mean, the classic duo of like the straight man and the guy that's always getting the straight man in trouble. But finally, in this film, you know, Harold just said, fuck it, I had enough. So it's been six years since Harold and Kumar have been friends. And Harold and Kumar, John Cho and Cal Penn, yeah, respectively, right? right? Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, I always fuck up names. I got to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> Those are easy names. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're one syllable. Yeah. It's, and they haven't hung out much less been friends. And or that, Sulu and that Indian guy. Oh, that Indian like guy. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what we're talking about. Uh, their lifestyles are vastly different. And they replaced each other with new friends. Harold is a corporate guy now with a big house and a nice senorita for a wife. Kumar is still living in the same shitty apartment, still getting high. And he has replaced Harold with a pretty young thing. But in this case, it's just a young stoner cockhound version of himself. So, yeah, you know, it's just the guy's just younger. You know, he's appropriate for living in that apartment. He's like yeah. a high w- Waldo. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a white guy. He's like yeah, a fucked little, up Waldo. Little yeah. nerdy stoner guy who's yeah. horny as hell. Now, when Kumar has to take a package to Harold that was accidentally brought over to the apartment that they used to live in, he inadvertently destroys a Christmas tree that Harold's father his father-in-law has grown for eight years. This Christmas tree is Christmas to his father-in-law. And did we fail to mention that his father-in-law 
is Danny Trejo. He's a very oh, angry yeah. Danny Trejo, <laughs> Trejo who hates his son-in-law. I yeah. mean, yeah, yeah. Even I don't think Danny, Danny Trejo, Trejo could play it any other way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even for Danny Trejo, he's angry. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the desperado Danny Trejo would be like, calm down. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the <laughs> only tattoos thing that, are angry. Exactly. <laughs> the only thing they got going on their side is that Danny Trejo has left with the family for mass and will not be back until midnight or sometime afterwards. So Harold and Kumar have a very small window of time to get that Christmas tree and I'm forced to go on another adventure that involves, yes, weed, frozen penises, as we mentioned, mm-hmm. uh, Ukrainian gangsters, and yes, again, Neil Patrick Harris. Yes. <laughs> it it yes. wouldn't be a Harold and Kumar without Neil Patrick it, Harris. It, it no, would not. No, and let me, say, let me say this. Neil Patrick Harris is fucking awesome in this movie. Yeah. What can I do for you, my burglars of turd? I'll help you still alive. What are you talking about? We saw you get shot, remember? You have to be more specific. In that whorehouse? In Texas. You branded a prostitute. Remember? Oh, yeah. (laughs) The reason we're here is I was wondering if I can get you one of those Christmas trees from set. Sure, no problem. How'd you know that? I can read your mind. Thanks, Neil. Yeah, thanks, Neil. Yeah, no problem. Hey, Merry Christmas, guys. We'll see you in the fourth one. Hell yeah. yeah. Really. This is by, I mean, far, wow. by far the best yeah. NPH appearance oh, yeah. in the he, he's, he's a fucking run, runaway train in this goddamn movie. You, you can't get enough of him. It's almost like like they, they say, we're going to give you 15 minutes. He's like, and in 15 minutes, I'm going to take over this shit. Yeah, Denzel <laughs> yeah. Washington cannot stop this motherfucker. Yeah. He is that no. fucking I great. Guess they, yeah. they do everything but like literally stop the movie, have him come out and talk to the audience, go, hey, how you doing? What's going on? Where are you from? Yeah. And we would eat it up because he is just that good. And he's in 3D. Yeah. <laughs> so, Even yeah. better. Yeah, I mean, and there's, there, he has lines in this movie that I will not even tell you because the way he says these lines are surprising. They'd be spoiling his, his appearance you, you, for you. You couldn't do his delivery. That's the thing. You, you watch him, it's like, man, this guy... He's a comedic genius. The way he can deliver these mm-hmm. lines with, with this kind of timing and just make everything sound so I thought funny. you were going to say I wasn't gay enough to deliver the <laughs> <laughs> I would never no. say that. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody was in Contraire, <laughs> <mon frere. laughs> Well, I mean, let me, let me, I mean, not only does he, I mean, does he really bring it, uh, but the motherfucker can sing. I'm like, Jesus Christ, when is he actually going to do it? Uh, and I'm the gay one? All out, yeah, yeah, all all out fucking, yeah, an all out fucking Christmas album. Because, and wow. Honey, he can sing <laughs> and dance. Hey, he, and he's just he, gorgeous. He's he's a, a, in a manly sort of way, I mean. He's a triple threat. Hey, look. <laughs> I'll open up my asshole for those Christmas carols, all right? I mean, wow. That motherfucker, yeah, that motherfucker almost converted me. Wow. <laughs> uh, well, you said it all, right? <laughs> yeah, I know where else to go. Um, I, I got to say, man, as much as I just hated that second movie, everything I hated about the second movie was not here. It's almost like they did a complete reverse. Like, I was telling Cyrus before how much I hated uh, Kumar. I just hated that character because he was obnoxious. To a point where, like, nobody would be friends with this guy. He's an asshole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was a complete asshole. Just did nothing but make trouble. Said shit that wasn't funny. And it's like, get the fuck away from me. Whether I have a family or not. Like, I don't want to be around you. Nobody would want to be around you. And he starts out that way. But he quickly becomes like, you know what? He's, they've toned him down to where you're mm-hmm. like, okay, he is a good, loyal friend, and you would stick with him. And the way that the two of them work together, even though there's some tension... They, they argue back and forth, and yet they still work together. They still have a chemistry. I never saw the first one, but I have to assume that chemistry was there for the oh, first really? movie. Oh, really? Okay, see, because I'm the opposite of you. I saw the first one, and it's one of those movies that I didn't catch in the theater, but w- when I saw it on DVD, it, it really blew me away. It was like one of those kind of like small films that just kind of went under the radar, at least went under my radar. And when you know somebody turned me on to it, I was like, wow, this is like pretty fucking cool. You know, um, It's not a level like Cheech and Chong to me, but... It's close. And the thing is, I really like as much as I, I, I was always confused about the, the Asian guy being like the straight guy. And you had Kumar, who is an asshole. I'm like, well, how's this going to be funny? But it's like the situations that they get themselves in and the, and the characters that they run into are almost like the funny parts of the movie where they were just kind of, you know, they were just kind of stuck there. But they managed to work in this insane fucking circus of an environment, which made it hilarious, which made that first film funny. 
And the second one I never fucking saw because I heard all I heard across right. the board was it was fucking well, horrible. I, I I thought that the well the second one is much worse than the first one. I think the first one for me still suffered from that same thing you're talking about. Where oh yeah, that Kumar was just so like he was just the cause of all the problems, and you were just like, all right, man, why would he stick by this guy? He's such a jerk. I mean, I've had dumb stoner friends in the past. Hell, I've been the dumb stoner friend in the past. But you know what? <laughs> Not nobody would stick by a guy who's just that obnoxious. Yeah. And you're right. In this one, they completely make him well though at first you're like here we go yeah exactly you know, it's not 10 minutes into it where they pull back way back on that and they go this is just a guy who's trying to make the best of a bad situation yeah he's high and that affects matters to a certain extent and and he's certainly a little bit accident prone probably or just bad luck prone but ultimately he and kumar are totally on the same side on this one which is trying to get through this night and find a replacement fucking christmas tree on <laughs> christmas eve before midnight and and it works on that level because Before Danny Trejo kills the yeah, you're, you're, you're with that and it's like born out of like a reminiscence of their old friendship too you yeah. know because like Kamar didn't even have to be there but he feels so bad for the incident what happened even though Harold is totally giving him the don't worry about it I got it I don't need you you can go your own way yeah. he feels so bad about it and he so wants to make up make it up to him that he's sticking by this guy all the way through his night of hell yeah. his after hours on Christmas Eve yeah you know I, I you could you actually like him a lot in the yeah film. well you know I see that's what I like about this movie is that they've both grown up a little bit. I mean, even even Kumar being the stoner that he still is. So you have, you know, Harold, who's like we say, he's a corporate guy now. This guy's married. He's gone on with his life. He's a little more serious in this movie, which makes him even more of a straight man, which makes his reactions funnier to all the situations that they get into. But Kumar is just the guy that with without having Harold for so long he's trying to win back his affections which in a sense makes him more responsible in this movie which is what makes him pull, be pulled back a little bit in this movie it seems like they have more of a reason to be on this adventure we were just talking about earlier how Cyrus and I we talking about how the thing that didn't work for Harold and Kumar the first one for me is that it is just so random yeah. you got two guys who are goofy no real motivation except just to get to White Castle those characters themselves didn't seem like anything but devices to make nasty jokes in this film not only do they have to get a treat, but they have to reconcile their friendship. And this movie has more than more heart than those two movies did, which made me a little more invested in it, which makes everything amped up a little more for me. It makes even the humor a little bit funnier for me. Yeah, and it is like that same type of humor to a certain extent. I mean, there's certainly some pretty nasty jokes in here. It's yeah. Like pretty like, you know, like, oh, you wouldn't want to take kids to this movie, that's for sure, or have to explain it to them afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, they do work better because of that just uh, sort of generosity of spirit, I hesitate to say. Well, you know, no, no, that's right. Well, well, but that, along with the characters being more grounded, when the situations get crazy, there's like, there's like, I don't know, it feels like there's an anchor. So it made everything funnier. Like the, the wilder the adventures got, the funnier it was because there was an investment. And it, it's funny because it seemed like with the second movie, there was so often that they were like, hey, let's stop. So we can so we can smoke out, so we can do drugs. Here, drugs are kind of a problem. They're kind of like, wow, this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we we actually just took something and we don't like it. This is not cool. Yeah. Oh, it's by, not things in by the, the way, way uh -huh. Carlos, I want to ask you, and I'll I'll say in a little while. Did you recognize anybody special in this movie? Uh, the Risen. Oh, well, he is special, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. The Rizzo from the Wu Tang Clan, yeah. which apparently uh, Harold and Kumar, all the actors, John Cho and, and Cal Penn, mm -hmm. love because they reference him a lot in the movie. But no, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about somebody even more special. I'm trying. Than, I'm trying what, to you, think. I tell you what, you go ahead and uh, I, I, I'll let you think about that. We I'll already said Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's even bigger than Neil yeah. Patrick Harris. Uh, okay, but, that's yeah, but, just blasphemy. But yeah, can I can I say this though? As far as like, because uh, I, I am a fan of the first movie. I mean, I hear you guys making your complaints about it, but I never. Uh, but I, you know, I I really loved it, and I thought this movie is felt like such a natural progression yeah. of that first movie uh, to where it's like I, I I'm curious to, as hell to find out because I, I will see it, what the fuck they did so wrong in the second one. But this one is it, I love that their relationship went that much further to where I'm like wow, you know, it's like they this is kind of a natural progression as far as the them becoming adults now, which I thought wow. 
for a movie like this, I'm a, I'm really shocked that they're even going to try to touch that, especially dealing with these characters where it's like, you know, honestly, there's not much to them besides to be like the two fuck ups. Right. You know? It's odd that early on in this film, when they're stored, sort of sticking to reality and they're setting up the premise, I was just kind of bored with most of the humor. I was like, well, it's more of the stuff. You're like, right. okay, there's going to be the one of these, like they're going to get high and yada, yada. But once it just said, fuck it, you already know the setup, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, the characters and the, what the problem is, it goes into a, more and more absurd fan 